Hey Internet, this is Gunter with Many Mishaps Games, and today we're going to be unboxing and checking out Dungeons & Dragons minis from Walmart. So, a, about a week ago I got a text message that said that they were clearancing out a bunch of metal Dungeons and Dragons miniatures and uh, the group that I play D&D with they ended up buying me a set of them and the three sets are the iconic characters little set the one with the beholder the medium set and the one with the dragon the big set. So we're going to be cracking these open, checking them out, and uh, giving you our thoughts on these miniatures. So we're going to start, we'll go little to big, we're going to start with these little ones. Let us know in the comments if uh, you've checked out these miniatures, or if you like them, or if you're using them. So I can, I can, they're very heavy. There's definitely that. Um, they're definitely going to be able to clomp around on, on top of your plastic miniatures. Oh, that's, that's fun. The back of the box comes with this little background. So maybe we make that into a little diorama or something someday. Put that over here with the art stuff. That's cool. I like that little as a display. Alright, so first up. Mind Flayer there, an Illithid. Oh yeah, camera's on the side, sorry guys. So, the painting job is, is okay. I might add some paint since it looks like they leave large areas of stuff unpainted. And uh, that's okay. We like, we like adding stuff. But so you can see, like, it's all the, I don't know if the metal itself is black or if it was just uh, base coated in black, but all of the, even the little, like, straps and buckles and everything is all just, like, uniform metallic black, so maybe we get, maybe we get to play with some colors on these guys. So there's the Illithid, and then we have got the, oh, these are in there pretty good. Dragon King. I'll have to check to see what he is, but some sort of fighter or paladin or barbarian. Probably not a barbarian. We got the armor. It says that he is. It says that he's a cleric. So maybe the thing he's holding is like a holy weapon or a shillelagh. It kind of looks like he's just holding a big fish that he's going to go to battle, swinging a big fish around. But that's okay. Um, I don't really have the tools or abilities to kit bash metal. Uh, so that's, he's gonna just have to keep on fighting with that, with that, uh, sacred fish. I think it, I think it's supposed to be a, man, it sure looks like a fish. I, I'm just getting lots and lots of fish vibes. There, there's that. So, I don't know what it's supposed to be. Maybe a mace, but it definitely has a little bubble in the paint where the eyeball would go for the fish. So, I, go, I like that he has a fish. I think that's cool. Uh, the other thing that I'm noticing is that these have long oval bases, so they definitely won't fit exactly inside of a one inch standard square. Uh, but that's okay. Alright, we have got Dritz Dorden, iconic Drow of the Realms. Oh, interesting. At first I thought maybe he had his weapon broken off, but it's actually along the back of his arm, which is pretty cool. I generally think of, he's got two straight sort of katana longswords, and I generally think of him have, as having curved scimitars. Uh, I don't know if that's just a weird thing of mine. But there again, same thing. None of the straps are all just a uniform brown. Um, and then a lot of bleed from the green pants down into the silver boots. So, 
maybe we make another video and we do a little touching up of the paint on these guys because they're a lot of fun and I like the weight to them. Um, all right, next up we've got our shield guy here. Sorry also if you're getting a lot of crackling on the audio. These make a lot of noise. It says he's a human fighter. Well, there you go. Definitely like the... There we go. Sorry. I got my, my camera upside down so I keep trying to put it over here and that's the on button. I don't want the camera. There we go. Um, so I love, love, love that he's got um, the darker hair and skin tones. There's a there's humans in D and D through down through the miniatures have his, historically been pretty whitewashed, and I love seeing a variety of of kinds of cultures and backgrounds represented. So he's got. So this is hard. It looks like he's supposed to have a silver mace, but he got colored brown shield color. So I'll probably go back in and add some silver to that because the handle is silver. I guess it's brown on the back. So anyway, some consistency issues here. You can see the bottom of the mace spear, whatever it is, is silver on the side with this on the front on the leg, but it's brown again on the back with the shield. So I'll have to just go back and add silver if I want it silver or maybe we make it a different color entirely um, so that our shield and armor don't get lost in it. I don't know about the blue pants either. That, that's, that, that's definitely bleeding onto the pants silver. So, um, And I think in there even You've got a gold um, sort of neck mesh and the brown strap, there's no brown at all, but it goes directly from gold neck thing down to the silver armor. So a little bit of, a little bit, plus look at that shield. I'm going to be able to put really, something really big and cool and design on that shield. I'm really excited for that. That's going to be awesome. Okay, those are our four um, icons. Next up, we have got the uh, set with the beholder. I appreciate you guys' patience with me as I get these open. I should have detaped them before I recorded. I swear I'm smarter than the cardboard. So the big oval bases. I don't know. I don't know what kind of tools would be required to work with metal like I do with the plastic and, and different materials. Keep that close, I guess. Oh my gosh. This makes me happy. Okay, so we've got... I'll pull the whole thing out again. Maybe. We'll try. rip this diorama. The backdrop picture is so cool. Aha! I am maybe not smarter than a cardboard. I've got some of these ties to untie. I'm sorry internet, this is going to take me a second. Small price to pay though, right? For cool miniatures. Crackle, crackle, crackle. I'm so sorry for the audio. I'm sure you guys are probably deafening. One down. So, I didn't think of it, but this could probably be used for some kind of shield or facing or plate side of a building. Two down. We'll put it in the kit bash kit. And there is three. 
last one fighting with me here. Three. All right, now we should, in theory, be able to, oh yes, that was much easier. So the diorama on this one is sort of a swampy, and this one's actually deep enough for the miniatures to stand in. We got this kind of cool picture. Um, again, it's just cardboard, so I may have to find a way to copy it or reinforce it or give it some thought. All right, so the thing that I was so excited about before I realized that this was package difficult is it's Minsk and Boo from the old Boulder's Gate game. That makes me so extremely happy. And um, I was always, always, always wondering why they didn't ever make miniatures for that game. Uh, since it was based in D&D. This is super cool. This, um, but even there, he's got a sword that is just apparently cloth purple and, uh, and no other colors. So he'll go, he'll go on the touch-up paint pile. And this is awesome. We've got a, it's so hard to get bards. Just a not you just don't see bards a lot. So to have one that's also metal is kind of uh, bardception there. So he's a metal mini and he's a metal music player. Okay, I thought that was entertaining. Maybe you didn't. Maybe it was a stretch. And then it says we've got two clerics. We've got. A tiefling cleric, which I love the idea of that, of a person that has a uh, potentially demonic ancestry. Whoa! Knock over the whole big box of random there, sorry. Um, as a cleric, so that's a, cool, that's a cool change from what you expect. Same with this, same with the orc cleric. And all of these guys, all of these guys need, need paint touch-ups, so. But, I mean, clearance at Walmart, you're really, it's really a good deal, so, and they're heavy, and I'm just really excited to see, I'm going to have to do a whole other episode, you guys, I'm going to have to do a whole touching up the Walmart minis, that's exciting, I'm really excited, um, okay, there we go, alright, last but not least, we've got our pièce de résistance, Probably can even hear my French over the crackling. Yeah, wow. So this guy apparently is only metal in the middle. And it seems like he's got rubbery kind of eyeball stocks there. So this is the beholder, and this one actually has the best paint job of any of them so far. Um, and it's got that that removable flying base, so you do got to be careful with those. I've had to repair so many of those flying bases. Um, so he'll probably just do with a wash, I think. Um, make some of these scales pop out on the back there. All very, very, very cool. Very exciting miniatures. Um, I am so grateful for um, Frybox64 and some guy named Joe and the other D and D folks for for picking these up for me. I am um, I really really like them a lot. All right, that's our middle set. We're ready for the big one. So this one comes with the dragon and four others, and I'm breaking plastic again. Sorry, you guys. I mean tape. The D tape them. So we love our deals and many mishaps. Definitely, definitely like saving some money whenever possible. Tape proof to be no match. Oh, this one's got a cool. Well, they're all cool, but this one's got another cool diorama in the background. Put that here. You can tell what they are. All right, so we've got another human fighter. So this is there's, a, there's overlap here. Two of these are from the same. Oh yeah, we learned this last time. Let's get those 
and set pieces then. Wow, they, these ones, they twisted and then hot glued over the top, so I might just have to cut them. All right, be right back. Wire snips. That's way easier than what I did for the other one. Okay, yeah, that's faster. Much, much better. Survey says. Well, that's not exactly what I meant to happen, but it works. Dragon is free. It's a heavy duty, immensely massive weighted dragon. The wings are rubberized, rubber, kind of like the, um, the beholder's tentacles there. Then go open the eye stock. We got some more clips and clear wire. Ooh, that reminds me, the clear wire. Um, at some point around Valentine's Day, I'm going to be trying to make a tensegrity base for a miniature. So, you might have to Google that term, it was new to me. Um, but it appears to be floating on string or wire or chain, and um, it's a it's an optical illusion that basically makes it look like the thing is not attached to to the thing that's holding it up. Very cool diorama on the inside, little volcanic mountain side for our dragon. I love these little little display areas. I might have to use these for taking pictures of miniatures. All right, so first. Yikes, good thing they're metal. First miniature is a duplicate from the other set. This guy's got red, which I think works a lot better than the blue pants. But also another shield to paint. I'm so excited, I've got two, two shields. And they could be twinsies, they could be from the same town, they could just be rivals or, uh, you know, like um, evil doppelgangers of each other, alternate universe folks, so that's awesome. Same with this uh, tiefling cleric, so the other tiefling cleric was purple armor, this one has got gold armor, I might put more gold gold on there because this is kind of looks like a brown that I think is standing in the place of gold. Also not sure why the blue cape is showing why the blue cape is showing through the midsection there. It's a little weird. So that'll probably go back to being gold as well. Love that they did the tail though against the back. Um, no risk of it breaking off. Same with the weapons. And I know they'll probably get some criticism from people that that like everything to be freestanding. But it's such a smart idea if you don't want your miniatures to break to have the cape or the leg or the side um, be attached to the weapon in the arm. Uh, it just reinforces that miniature so much. Alright, so those two were duplicates. Obviously the dragon was not. <laughs> the dragon is just so cool. It's such a big miniature. Is it a miniature anymore if it's so big? Hmm, let me know in the comments. Okay, next up. I like this a lot. Whoa! It's a rogue. Maybe a dark elf or somebody with a ninja mask on. I just get out of the camera so you can so it'll focus on this thing. I don't know how to make myself disappear and not be the one in focus. But there you go. Um, very cool rogue. The, I love the gold paint line around the cloak. Um, although. The rest of the miniature appears to be unpainted, and, or just in that metallic red. Uh, the outside of the cloak, as well as all of the clothes and armor and everything under the cloak, all is that same rust brown. Uh, so that'll probably get some detail down into there. And i um, got to take a group photo with these guys so we can have a before picture when we do that detailing video. 
Now this is interesting. This is, appears to be a metal rework of a sculpt that they already used in the plastic like 12 years ago. So, um, and I'll have to find that miniature. But here's a dwarf miniature that's holding a big hammer. And this guy, the original plastic sculpt, the painted that the ones that came in the, the boxes were gold. So his armor was all gold. Uh, so this is a very much more functional, practical, ready for adventuring version of that. The gold armor never seemed very practical to me. Expensive, hot, not very movable, and and weak. Break, breaks easy. Like gold is not a uh, armor metal. Um, so the other one, I always was kind of like, well, oh, he's gonna just have gold-colored armor or something. But this one's much more practical, and I love the the beard braid. It's painted all the way down the the stomach there. Super cool. There's a little skull on the on the attacking side of the mace or hammer there. That's fun. Um, yeah, so that'll be a fun one. I really like that. The only the only thing is here is these are a little bit bigger than the 25 millimeter scale, so they're probably like a 32 or 35 millimeter scale. Where's my quarter to hold up? So 25 millimeters is an inch. So you can see they're bigger than than especially the dwarf since he's the same size as everybody else. Um, is bigger in scale, but that's not a that's again just me being a nitpicky person. So that is all of them and wow is that a cool that's a neat gift I'm very excited to use these for DMing and, and I mean Boo and Minsk and Dritz de Orden and the, the fish guy that's fighting with the fish and two shields to paint two sets of twinsies an awesome dragon and another video project where I'm gonna touch up all the paint it's just a really exciting and fun day today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. And if you can support on Patreon, that's what keeps us going. And uh, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks for riding along. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Internet.